Thank you guys, I'm really excited to be here today. As she said, I am in public health, so I wanna start off with a disclaimer, I am not an IT person, I'm not a GIS, I don't know how to do a lot of this stuff, but I come up with the ideas for it. So, I am from Oakland County Health Division. Oakland County is just north of Detroit, about 30 minutes, and we're in the metropolitan Detroit area. I work at the health division there, which is the local health department for our residents of just over 1.2 million people. This is one of the most pressing public health issues that we have right now. Just over 91 people a day in our country die from an opioid, opioid overdose. Drug overdoses are now the leading cause of injury-related death, surpassing motor vehicle crashes and firearms. Prescription drugs and prescription drug abuse are the primary driving force behind overdose deaths that include the boundaries of Oakland County, Michigan. And I, of course, couldn't come to a GIS conference and not do a GIS story map. So in Oakland County, enough prescriptions are written so that every resident can have 48 pills. We actually began in the spring by mapping out our prescription disposal locations. Our sheriff's department has Operation Medicine Cabinet, if anybody's heard of that, and they had mapped their 36 locations throughout the county. And we were able to take that and enhance that and add in local pharmacies that took back uh, prescriptions, as well as deterra bag locations, which is a um, charcoal activated bag that our local community coalitions have where you can add water, put prescriptions in, you shake it up, it deactivates the drug and it's actually biodegradable as well for those of uh, um, residents in our county who don't have access to transportation to get to the other locations. And so it was just about this time when it was actually a white paper that was written by Esri and Govloop and I got all excited about it and I had notes all and I ran to our health officer and I'm like, we have to do this. Um, and our IT partners, of course, as they seem to do, read our minds and came to us with this project. And using data from our partners, we were able to create multiple detailed maps that focused on prevention, treatment, and recovery services. Maps that show the location and amount of prescriptions, as well as treatment and fatality data. So now I'm going to take you on a tour of our open data portal. So at the top, we have some key statistics, which is the current number of prescriptions written in the, um, I think that year, 2016, which will be updating pretty soon. We also have the middle number, which is the uh, amount of pounds of prescriptions that were destroyed by the DEA on our last take back day. We do big events around um, these April and October dates to push that out, and we keep track of how many pounds were uh, destroyed. And then also partnering with our community mental health, the number of outpatient, number of individuals who are in outpatient treatment for the last year. And those are residents who are uninsured or underinsured. Now to the exciting map part. We were able to take our maps data. So in Michigan, that's our prescription drug monitoring program, and we were able to map them by zip code so that we can see the number of prescriptions written in our CVTs. There we go. And it will give you the number of opioids as well as the number of stimulants. And then we were able to see that over a three year trend and how that changes color. So as we notice some of the dark um, color that was up here. The darker blue is the more prescriptions. The lighter the blue would be the less number of prescriptions. We did have a decrease from 2014 to 2015, which we were great. 65,000 decrease. That was amazing. That equated to three pills. Three pills per resident. This is probably one of my favorite maps, and I'll probably say that about every map. Um, and this isn't actually a map that we even created. Um, this is a, an Esri map. Jeremiah Lindman here created this crowdsourcing map. And what it is that I like about this map is that it puts a face to this epidemic. I mentioned earlier that we had an increase of 267% in drug deaths, which is a huge, a huge statistic. However, that was the increase of nine deaths to 33. We work very closely with our medical examiner, and we know that that's a conservative number. 
So we were fortunate enough to have interns, because who doesn't love students who work for free? And we were able to get some epidemiologist interns from the University of Michigan. We partnered them up with our epidemiologists and public health nurses and sent them in to look deeper into these medical records. And we were able to actually discover that we had five times the amount of deaths that was originally reported. Um, 2016, we ended up having 165 opioid-related deaths um, instead of the 33. And so we were able to see the average number of deaths, the average age of the person, and it doesn't show up here, but this is male and this is female. And we were able to look at all the deaths in our county over that year. And we were able to see the populations that were disproportionately affected. 90% of these deaths were Caucasian. 70% were male. The average age was just shy of 40 years old. And one of the most surprising things is that as we looked at this data, education was increasing. Those who had college education, college degrees, were more likely to die of an opioid-related death in Oakland County. I mentioned our prescription drug abuse map, prescription disposal map. And what I like about this map is not just that it shows where everything is and, and residents can get in and they can type their address and see what's near them. It gives me the opportunity to look at our county as a whole. So I can see in our upper left quadrant, which is quite rural in Oakland County, that we have three locations, and two of them are the bags, only one is law enforcement. So that we're able to team up with our partners and look at how we can approach pharmacies in the area and work with our law enforcement on how we can get more options for our residents in that area. I can click on a few of these. We are also able to be able to pull up and put in hours, put in what they accepted because of course, nobody accepts the same thing. That would be too easy. And then there's more info to connect them to websites as well. Because I mentioned I was a public health nerd, um, prevention, we're all about prevention. So we definitely wanted to map out all of our prevention resources. We have FAN in Oakland County, which is Family Against Narcotics. I don't know if that expands beyond Michigan or not. We were able to uh, map where their location's at, and they provide support to families and friends of those who uh, are addicted and abusing narcotics. Also able to map our state licensed prevention providers. Some of those are licensed to do prevention and treatment, and those are also mapped here. In addition, also mapping our treatment locations. Before, this was just a list that lived on our community mental health website, and we were able to take that and map and show them, again, maybe where there are gaps in our service, which tend to be the same region in each map. And that's something that we're allowed, um, able to look at and really focus on with our partners. And finally, wanting to map our recovery, because we know that we have prevention, we have treatment, but in order to keep people from the cycle, we have to have recovery services. So we were able to map both Narcotics Anonymous, NA and AA, within our county, and also outside of our county as well, because we may think in borders and public health at the county level, but our residents sure do not. So however, we're still in the beginning stages of this project. We've been doing this for a little bit less than eight months, and we are continuing um, to work with our partners to gather this data. And of course, as we, as we keep talking about data, not everybody collects it in the same way, in the same format. So really, as a county of Oakland County size, that can be a really big undertaking, but that is something that, as a partnership, we are taking on. So since we've been less than a year into this, a lot of what we've been doing is, is trial and error, and we're still trying to figure it out but seeing the results of these maps have really energized our momentum. 
And through that, we are now exploring MOUs and data sharing agreements and um, internal portals with secure logins because we do have quite a few things that we can't show publicly that we want to map. Um, address level of Narcan administrations, heroin crime data, um, locations of where those who are being admitted into treatment, where they live at, so that we can then target programming and services. We're also exploring additional crowdsourcing maps so that we can collect information on alternative therapies to opioids. So what are our residents using instead of opioids? Or what do we want to encourage them to use? Yoga and, and chiropractors, um, so that we can collect that data from them. And our partners at IT and Esri have really been supportive. People who are outside of public health have an entirely new view and a new perspective, and their, and their innovation has motivated not just myself, but our entire partnership and our agency. Public health lives in a world of lists and line graphs, and we are now looking to visually track trends and fatalities, overdoses, crimes, prescriptions, and treatment admissions by location, as well as looking at creating apps in real time. And we have enhanced our partnerships. So Jack mentioned this morning about how this uh, increases collaboration, and it truly, truly has. Um, we've just enhanced our, our partnership and how we work together with our local community mental health authority, our medical control authority, EMS providers who have never been at the table before are now coming to every meeting, and we have a fire captain and, um, and additional grassroots organizations. We also have a large homeless health care collaboration. We have over 80 agencies that come together to work on this vulnerable population and being able to map those resources and our point in time data, which I hear uh, may be shown somewhere later today. So I'm going to pop into that. Um, and definitely how we can continue to use this on all of our initiatives. So in public health, we know the social determinants of health say where you live matters. Or in the words of Esri, it really is the science of where. Using GIS can help to effectively communicate complex health issues by showing us the intensity and location of these situations. Ultimately, it's our, it's our goal that, that this whole project, the maps, the internal um, dashboard, the public apps, will visualize data for us and our partners so that we can target our programming and services, break out of stereotypes and stigma, especially when it's related to substance use disorder and even suicide prevention, collaborate among our partners for a countywide unified approach, and effectively inform, monitor, and respond to this epidemic. These solutions, I believe, can truly change the face of public health in Oakland County and hopefully everywhere. Thank you.